Walker. Let's take a little bit more of a detailed look at how they will line up for this second race, but the big point scorer and the money payer when it comes to A1 GP. Remember, there are $300,000 to the winner of this race, and South Africa would love to take that big prize, along with the 10 points that goes with winning. Mexico on the front row with them, then France and Germany on row number two. Third row sees Great Britain up against New Zealand. New Zealand gained some places on the opening lap, but Great Britain also fought their way past the United States that is behind in seventh place alongside Canada. Switzerland and the Netherlands are then next up, and Dutch driver Jeroen Bliekemollen really going to be pushing hard in the early laps. Malaysia and China are on row number six. Brazil and Australia on row seven. Australia have had a little bit of a disappointing weekend so far. It could change now. Ireland have had troubles too. They're back on row eight with Indonesia. Lebanon and the Czech Republic are on row nine. New teams, Greece and Singapore, are absolutely together side by side on row 10. Then India, Italy and Pakistan complete the 23 nations who are contesting this first meeting of A1 GP. So Greece and Singapore, the two new entries, big learning curve for those two teams, John, but uh, nonetheless, some pretty impressive performances from both of them. Yes, I mean, it's been very difficult coming in at the last minute, particularly for Singapore and, and their driver Christian Murchison, because he was literally thrown into the deep end on Saturday morning when the prime driver was unable to take part. He developed tonsil letters overnight and Murchison got dumped into the car. And equally for Greece, their deal only came together in the last days before this event here in Holland. So the time taken to get the car together, the team together, was literally the last second to get the car on the grid. Well, we're waiting for the start uh, signal to be given. And the Prime Minister of the Netherlands here, Jan Peter Balkanenda, is here. And he is going to give us the little address. Jen. Gentlemen, for the pride of your nation, start your engines. The signal given by the Prime Minister of the Netherlands. The horns play in the grandstands and the V8 engines begin to fire up. Well, they do love the motorsport here at Zandvoort in the Netherlands. Be it DTM, Formula 3, the Grand Prix Masters, of course, probably the event now at Zandvoort most famous. But maybe after a when GP's left, that's going to take that mantle away from all those other premier events. Yes, it's been a, a great venue for motor racing over the years. The first Formula 1 Grand Prix was held back in 1952. It's the first A1 GP event, and it's going to be South Africa and Mexico who will lead them off the line. Now, remember, we had a rolling start for the first race of the day. It'll be a standing start for this one, but they will have a green flag lap first to get some tyre temperature. Yes, and of course, the pole position is swapped from the right to the left. So if there's any advantage to be held, it will be with South Africa and Adrian Zaug. He will start marginally ahead on the grid of Mexico, but we know Salvador Duran is prepared to take every opportunity to get past the young South African into the Tarzan. And if he can make it stick this time, well, then he will be able to control the pace of the race. And that one just slightly slow Germany, very anxious to get away. Maybe just a little bit of a clutch as we will go on board with France. And look at the way he's moving the car around. Car is stopped on the grid, wave yellow flags. They've got one car remaining on the grid, and it is Malaysia. And has there been contact with Malaysia directly behind? No. Another car. Stuff behind another. Oh, oh so oh, that is nice. Suspension on Malaysia's car has been damaged. It has broken, and that was Switzerland who stole. And Alex Jung in the Malay car is now going to have to drive off track into the pit lane with a broken rear suspension due to that contact with a stationary Swiss car. Now, I wonder, has any damage been done to the Swiss car? In the would you believe it? Team Malaysia's race comes to an end before they even get going on the green flag lap. He misjudged how much the rear wheel sticks out. It does stick out quite a long way, as he's just discovered. Tried to get past, just clipped the back of the Swiss car. Now, I think the Swiss car has actually got away, John. Yes, they did. They managed to get the engine started. So that will mean Sebastian Buemi will make his way back. He'll have to start at the back of the grid because he has lost all the position that he had. So even further set back for Switzerland, having lost their grid position. There we see Alex Jungner. He will wonder what has gone wrong. But he clipped the rear of the Swiss cars. He tried to make his way around. Maybe being slightly impatient and understandably so because he knew that if he didn't move at the point he moved, he was certainly going to lose all chance of regaining his original start position, which would have been 11th on the grid. Well, I tell you what, that team, the Malaysian team, Team, I bet you they go to work on that car because you never know what's going to happen in a situation like this. We might have a start and then a red flag. They've got to get to work on it and, and hope that they may get a chance still to run him. It's probably bent uh, 
a wishbone or a toe link, and it may be that they can replace that, get him out, but uh, they'll obviously hope for problems for everyone else to actually have any chance at all. Well, I think teams are certainly prepared for pretty much every eventuality, but that primarily involves the nose, the front wings, areas around the front of the car they would never normally expect to see their driver as he moves off his start position to clip the rear wheel of another car and damage what is probably a toe link at the bottom of rear suspension on that car so drama already the flat fa the uh, fireworks going off from the crowd around this track having a good old look around try and see what's broken there see if they can replace it but of course there's no way they're going to do it if this race goes according to plan and we get the standing start and a clean run into the first corner and no red flags that's it really it's all over for team malaysia before the race has even got underway the rest of the 22 nations now still making their way around as you said switzerland will have to start from the very back it leaves a little bit of a gap in fact quite a big gap for brazil because brazil sits was going to sit behind both malaysia and switzerland and now there are two car spaces or will be two car spaces directly in front of the brazilian car being driven by tuca rocha young Brazilian driver who sat on the sidelines throughout most of the first season of A1GP but he's got his big opportunity and he's got a, an even bigger one now he's got a, a big gap in front of him on the grid there's the view from the French car Nicolas Lapierre and everyone else moving into position and I mean this is a very tense moment I'm very tense sitting in the commentary booth because there's an awful lot going to happen between here and Tarzan a standing start is a totally different start to that of a rolling start and for many of the drivers in A1GP this season this is new to them not least of all Adrian Zarg on that pole position on the left alongside the more experienced Salvador Duran for Mexico. We're all set then for the first feature race of the second season of A1. Lights go out and away we go and who's going to make the start? South Africa, France trying to get through. Mexico's made a brilliant start. Mexico and South Africa has been swamped. South Africa down to fourth place. Here comes Great Britain. Great Britain going around the outside. Darren Manning's made a good start but he's going to emerge in third. And Nico Holtberg trying to get alongside South Africa, South Africa had a terrible start, that was inexperienced, and look how Saga's gone off, and he's been in the turn two, uh, something went wrong, we couldn't quite see, but we'll have a review of that, so the winner of race one is out on the first lap in turn two. You said it would all happen off the standing start, John, absolutely right, Mexico got away well, South Africa made a poor start, Great Britain made a great start, but have just lost out a little bit now to Germany, so they've gone back to fourth position, Germany now running in third place, and A1 title holders, A of France are running in a very dangerous looking second position. Now we wait to see whether the corner workers can get that South Africa car removed to safety quickly otherwise we may have once again the safety car being deployed to bring the field back under the control until that car is moved to safety. It's in a vulnerable point of the track right now. Netherlands up to seventh place as a result of the incidents that we've seen already. Mexico leads second place France, Germany close behind in third. Look at the Netherlands there protecting position from China. China running in eighth place. That's Kongshu Cheng, Frankie Cheng as we know him, who's going very well. He's got the Chinese car in the points. Ireland there getting squeezed out of it. Yes, I'm just trying to get the rail around Italy and uh, the tail end is what's making up the end of the field, Pakistan. So all the excitement occurred going into turn two when South Africa for inexplicable reasons. We just seem to see the car go straight on. He didn't really attempt to turn the corner and we have a review of that no doubt in a moment or two as the field filters their way into for the second time the Tarzan happened. China again, a nice tight line there for Frankie Chang, but Great Britain with New Zealand right behind. This is fourth, fifth. Then they've got Canada there as well. Rest of them coming through. Indonesia a little bit lonely. India, Greece, Italy running. Ireland, though, way down in a 16th place, so uh, 17th place, in fact. So that's a bit disappointing for Team Ireland. And up front, there, well, what's happened? I think that's France. I'm not sure. Czech Republic's in the pits without a front wing. Well, that's, that's contact with somebody. We didn't see that. France that... is leading. France is in front of Mexico. We didn't see what happened, but France has now taken the lead. Well, once now France gets its head into clear air, there's going to be no stopping. I tell you, Nicola Lapierre, he has got the car. He's got a comparable car to that that South Africa had and uh, that car and South Africa's car to me are the best two cars currently on circuit they've got the best rear stability of all the field and uh, Nicolas Pierre a winner a multiple winner last year for France he knows how to win races and now we've got this battle for second third and fourth of Mexico Germany and Great Britain and inevitably it will be held up by the car leading because they will be in defensive mode while the other two behind with New Zealand following Great Britain will be in attack mode now let's see if we can find out what happened oh it was a mistake from Duran for Mexico, that's what allowed France ahead. He did, he made 
the same mistake in the first race in the split race round two wide and Nicolas Lapierre didn't need a second invitation to say there's the lead of the race taken and once he is in the lead he will just drive away so I'm afraid Thomas Kostka is out of his first A1 GP feature race the Czech Republic will be hoping for better things next week when Thomas Enger returns to that car he's racing in the States this weekend but here's a familiar picture it's Team France leading an A1 GP race nothing in front of them trying to pull away from Mexico Germany Great Britain New Zealand Canada there then the Dutch car ahead of China behind China Switzerland and the USA and now that Nicolas Lapierre has got the lead he can control the pace of the race he is not required to try and pull out a huge lead the only concern that anybody will have of course is when it comes to that mandatory pit stop that everything goes well this year and there have been modifications to the suspension to the wheels to the hubs to the, the nut the hub nut to make the wheel change procedure a much more straightforward one than we had initially in a1gp riding on board with frankie cheng for team china he's going well at the moment holding on to eighth position china's only ever been once in the points in a1 on GP and he's in a thoroughly deserved eighth place he's been uh, up around that top 10 mark all weekend and you can see from the onboard graphics there the gears down to second gear back on the power here as he accelerates along this short straight leading into these two critical final corners fourth gear through the first one turn 11 now accelerates up out of here now a little breathe on the throttle perhaps there and through the lion -like curve the final bend and onto the straight and you can see on board with China that even Frankie Chen was having to apply a little bit of opposite lock. He got three quarter way around the corner, but a lock up from Germany going into the Taj, and then another one lock up from Team GBR following in fourth place. Team Switzerland has got a drive through penalty. It's been deemed to have done something wrong, not quite sure what it's for, but they've got a penalty. Italy there trying to move, can move on. Greece, Greece, the white and blue car, new to A1GP and under pressure from Italy, but I thought for a moment he'd done it, he hasn't, and Team Ireland might try and take advantage of this. Well, if I was Michael Devaney, I wouldn't be too impatient because these two cars, Greece and Italy, are probably going to get themselves tangled somewhere, if not sooner, maybe later, and Michael Devaney does not need to put the Team Ireland car into too much close proximity while these two nations battle it out. It is close between these two, isn't it? Driving for Greece, we've had three different drivers in the car, but this is Takis Kaitazit, who's raced in F3 in Greece. He's also raced in touring cars. Now, let's just see what's up. Germany's got past Mexico. You're watching from Great Britain here, and Germany has just slipped into second place. Mexico down to third. Great Britain still in fourth. And Nico Hulkenberg, another German Bunterkin, coming through the motor racing ranks, and uh, highly rated indeed by David Sears, who is running the Team Germany effort this year. He's got past Mexico. Mexico clearly not able to find the pace that they owe. And again, just watch the back of the car going through turn 11. And I think the problem that Salvador Duran has is he's suffering from a back end of the car that has not given him confidence. And therefore, he's not able to drive the car at the level. Particularly now, somebody's coming into the pits. Is this too early to do it? A drive to do a, a wheel tire change but Canada dives on the inside doesn't get past New Zealand I think it's Switzerland making their it's drive maybe, through yes, penalty it is there we are so Sebastian Boemi's being a good boy just 17 he's uh, 18 at the end of October the end of the month so uh, let's just see this was the moment that uh, Germany got past that was the end of the moment anyway that Germany managed to nip past Team Mexico and make the move stick that was a good effort from Nico Hülkenberg I wondered for a moment whether Great Britain, Darren Manning was going to be able to pass as well, but uh, he's still in fourth place. He's ahead of New Zealand in fifth position. Switzerland back out on track as they deal with that damaged car of South Africa, which went off on the first lap. Although all these battles have been taking place behind this man, Nicolas Lapierre, for France. The, the, there's the look back at the start. Let's have a look again, Ben, and see, catch what it was that went wrong first. It was the start, certainly uh, a very, very poor start for Adrian Zag, and then he, on the outside, suddenly he just locks on the ground and straight and what a, a sad end to sue up to a superb start to Adrian Zog's career in A1GP. Well, he is a rookie and he's allowed the odd mistake or two. That was his own mistake by the looks of things, but uh, he had success earlier on today and he will have plenty more, I'm sure, the sort of pace he demonstrated in that sprint race. But returning to what's going on now, Germany, can they do anything about the lead that Team France has got? Let's just watch them around this next lap. Five
five laps completed and uh, no France still with a faster lap on that last one than Team Germany. Well, prior to all this, Germany, Great Britain, Mexico, they were all racing each other and consequently Mexico, who was leading that group initially, was slowing the pace down. They, he couldn't go any quicker. That allowed France to draw away. But now that uh, Halkenberg has got clear of that battle for second place, he's now picking up pace, but he's still averaging about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a second, a lap slower than Nicolas Lapierre for France, who's got a comfortable lead of just under four seconds. There's no doubt, I think, that uh, Team China here, Frankie Cheng, is capable of lapping a little faster. He's staying right on the back of the Netherlands car. But meanwhile, Netherlands, Jeroen Bleekemolen is also closing up every now and then on Team Canada just ahead and also New, New Zealand's not far ahead in this bunch. It's a real group of cars all tied together, each perhaps looking for a tiny mistake from the other to take advantage of. So far so good, but we're still in the very early stages of the race. We're still three laps to go before we're into the pit window. Then the strategy will come to the fore. And also that'll be the point when the fatigue begins to set in, as we saw the cars come through turn five, six and seven, that's the part of the racetrack where the drivers are really suffering, especially through six down to seven. It's a very long, gradual curve, which then towards the end and approaching turn seven starts to tighten, and it's a heavy, heavy load on the upper body and the necks and the head of the drivers. New Zealand still leading this group then out through Turn 12, Lion Dyke corner, huge crowd, Dutch car currently running in seventh place. That's OK. Reasonable position keeps you in good shape for the latter part of this race when the pit stops will make all the difference. Quite a deep line taken into the corner by New Zealand. China taking a slightly tighter line in at the back of that group. Wonderful view looking down over the cars as they go into turn two. That was the area that South Africa went off at. And of course, it's game over for Team South Africa in this feature race. We've also lost the Czech Republic. We lost Malaysia as well, although no, Malaysia is back out in the race. So they did repair the car and get him running, but he's lost uh, quite a few laps as a result. Well, there's the overhead shot looking down into turn five. And uh, there, the corner turn six is from this point here. That's a curve. It looks a straight, but it's actually a long, long curve. And the, the G forces just build up, build up. Of course, the load in the steering also. And the teams have worked very hard to give the drivers a greater comfort zone than they would normally have on other racetracks. This circuit is a very, very tough circuit. And uh, now for Nicolas Lapierre, for France, he's in that ideal situation. He's got no traffic ahead of him. He's got nobody close behind. The nearest is Germany, 3.7 seconds. There's no pressure. So he is is able to control the pace of the race and drive the racetrack as he sees fit. Yeah, it's a perfect position for Nicolas Lapierre for Team France. It's a position they're very accustomed to, having taken 13 wins in the first season of A1 at GP. I don't think they're going to have it all easy. They might have got it all right here in this feature race, but certainly the start went very much in their favour. And then that little mistake from Mexico for allowing them to go through. Mexico is struggling, though, because Great Britain is now also past at Mexico. The Great Britain now in third position. Mexico is still struggling with the back-end grip of the car. Yeah, we spoke to Salvador Duran earlier, and uh, he was saying that just simply they've got to find a way to give him more self-confidence, give the car more rear-end grip. But if that's what the problem is, and I suspect that it is, then he's really going to sit there as a passenger. The best he can hope for is when they come in to make a tyre change, that mandatory pit stop, that at the same time, or in fact they can't do it, there's only six people available there, we see teams preparing already, but to maybe make an aerodynamic change, maybe take some of the front wing out of the car to help the steering load and uh, therefore make the life of the driver something that he can actually survive and get through the 45 laps or 70 minutes. There's for Team Switzerland having had that drive-through penalty now running down in 18th position, so it's going to be a tough one. It might be well worth their while going for a different strategy to the others. Eight laps, once they've done eight laps, the pit lane window is open, and we're going to see that mark coming up in just a moment. So the first few pit stops are going to be made very, very soon. Team Germany currently running in second place. It's going to be a nerve-wracking time for the mechanics, the first pit stop of the season. Germany in second place there, Great Britain in third. Darren Manning driving for Great Britain this weekend. Robbie Kerr, who drove last year, busy this weekend at Le Mans. And Darren got the nod for this weekend. Now there's Team Mexico struggling for grip a touch, running in fourth place. One of the other things that Salvador mentioned to us was that he also was suffering from a heavy bruise on his elbow on his left arm, which was just simply because he was using it to lever himself in the cockpit to get some support. Now that was something that probably wouldn't ordinarily give you a problem, but on a racetrack like this, which is so physical, any problem that you have physically will work against you. And that, that combined with a car that is not been not helping him as much as he needs is the reason why we see Mexico drop down to fourth place 
and they're now some one, well, just under two seconds behind Team Great Britain and seven and a half seconds behind race leader France. We could see some lots of changes when the pit stops are made because so many cars are running in close attendance to one another. Very likely to see some big changes. You can see that Italy's got past Greece. Italy have just managed that move and Ireland now trying to do likewise. You've got to watch out. Basil Schaben is there for Lebanon as well. Switzerland does make the first pit stop. So let's watch and see the Swiss team how they do it. It looks pretty smooth to me. Gets back out and Ireland caught between Greece and Lebanon. And Michael Devaney, another driver who lost a full practice session on Saturday morning because of a fuel pressure problem. And of course, any track time that has lost is track time you can never ever make up. And in terms of car setup, well, they just really are having to try and second guess what's going to happen now for a race of this duration. So pit lane is now open. Switzerland were able to take advantage of that because they were further back once the leader had crossed the line to complete eight laps they were able to come into the pit so they took advantage of that fact and they'll hope to get some clean air and get some quick running it might help switzerland later on in the race now we wait to see who else is going to make a stop and it's the netherlands going for an early stop so your own bleaker marlin i think that's brazil also heading into the pits brazil coming in from 10th place oh, so it'll be a welcome break for both these drivers just to come into the pits so early they've got a long long way to go 36 laps remain so the dutch team will run out the car stationary they can't do anything with the car until that car is stationary in the pit lane there you see the, the camera the head camera so let's one see goes on the left front that's on a good job jack's done okay you're on get the car in gear and uh, let's just work oh. the back of the car was slower than on the front so the front two guys had gotten out of the way but he was still being held by the man with the lollipop and there brazil has to fall in line behind now they must stay inside and well the broken line i don't know what the ruling is on that that is a broken white line so they may be allowed to pakistan has stopped out on track but well, that's coming into the pits that's coming into the pits i think he's locked it up yes real problems for everybody else who wants to make a pit stop because he could well be blocking the pit lane entrance i'm not sure no there might be just space around the front of his car but that's very tight there is not an awful lot of space but he has locked it up coming into the pits and stalled and he is stuck there and of course the marshals couldn't see it because he was hidden behind the barrier now the penny's dropped there running to get that car he's going to have to find the car get it the safety and device safety mechanism to put the car into neutral before they can push it out of the way team france leading and lapping fast and now somebody's coming in two cars trying to come into the pits it's great britain have they managed to? yes they have they managed to get around the front i think mexico was going and to new zealand was looking to come in i think and they decided not to and there other but you got to slow down wave yellow flags but new zealand i think we're told no don't come in and team gbr is here team gbr in the pits then this has got to be a good stop for great britain one guy per wheel has to remove one wheel put the new one on another crew member's allowed to move the wheels then once they're off the car but it's got to be one person per corner there's a problem on the front maybe a little bit slow on the front yeah, the, right, goes, the right front just didn't seem to go on as cleanly and the nut maybe didn't disengage from the, the gun itself but Darren Manning has a fresh set of rubber on hill be delighted to have that little breath and the safety car is not being deployed it's certainly moving out towards the exit of the pit wave yellow flags and I think we're going to see the safety car deployed very shortly to ensure we get that Pakistan car removed to safety now that's going to make a big difference because some people have stopped and some people haven't stopped if the safety car comes out now oh there's what happened to Pakistan yes simply came in and just locked up the rear brakes as he was turning the wheel that's inexperience but you know things like that happen and unfortunately now the consequence is not only did it compromise some of the entrance into the pit lane now we pakistan have got running now they might well make a pit stop they might decide to say well look let's call it a day you know, ali brings the car in they're still standing by with the safety car they haven't actually brought it out and i think i'm not sure it looks as though it is being deployed now out on track safety car and this now means the pit lane has closed once the safety car is on track you are not allowed to make your pit stop so all of those who have made their pit stop are now going to be able to bunch up behind the safety car and it's going to be an advantage to those that have stopped indeed it is that's going to favor particularly teams like team gbr because they were the car that was running in fourth place while other three top friends Germany and uh, Mexico had not made their pit stops. Neither did Matt Halliday for New Zealand. He was told at the point he was about to turn in, no stay out on track. So the safety car has picked up the race leader, Team France, but France is not allowed to come into the pits while we've got a safety car on circuit. And
and that means that those guys who have already made a pit stop are in an excellent position because the crocodile will all close up together and you may be several cars behind the leader in that queue but in terms of time of course you're very very close behind him so those lead cars france germany and mexico could be in trouble here up against the likes of great britain the netherlands and brazil those cars that have made their stops already this is going to be fascinating once everything sorts itself out and uh, there'll be a few teams upset but that's the way it goes indeed it is and you can imagine the teams that are going to be upset are going to be france germany mexico and new zealand the teams that are probably going to be rubbing their hands are in particular team gbr because that was the first of the front running teams to make that pit stop before safety car deployment but until all this washes out the safety cars return to the pit lane and those teams that have been caught short by the introduction of the safety car they then make their own pit stops but it, what it's going to do is going to make a, to a very exciting conclusion to this 45 lap or 70 minute feature race because the unpredictability that deploying a safety car provides for is something that you can never factor into your calculations you can only really say it may come at some point but you never know when you never know when and uh, this is really going to be very very difficult to work out exactly what's going to happen here light's still on the safety car so it's going to be out there for at least one more lap team france is the lead car sitting in behind there is uh, another car in there pakistan car of course as we know has been uh, lapped so that was the car that had the problem coming into the pits so germany mexico new zealand is the order currently but of those that have made a pit stop let's tell you who's first as they all come across the line and the timing and scoring system updates here the first of the cars that has made a pit stop that is in that queue is indeed great britain so it could be good news and it was great britain and usa who made that call to come in remember some cars made a call to come in and then changed their minds they might be regretting it now well they will be regretting it but of course they didn't know that the safety car was going to be deployed they assumed that that car the pakistan car could be quickly removed to safety and into the pit lane they maybe didn't anticipate that, that this would be a safety car deployment consequently the decision of new zealand but as they were on their way and then a very late minute call to say no stay out on track they'll rue that decision but you know you can never second guess what's going to happen when a, a deployment is going to be called so team france uh, won't have an awful lot of time in which to try and open up a lead I, I guess the tactic once the safety car comes in is to go hell for leather and open up as much of a lead as possible before you come into the pits for your stop but you've got to do it by lap 20. So we're only completed 12 laps so far, but that only gives them eight lap window at the moment in which to try and open up the advantage before they come in and make their pit stop. Of course, uh, Great Britain's quite a long way down in that queue, but nonetheless, uh, it's still going to be a tall order for Team France and the others to open up enough of an advantage once we go green. The safety car lights are out, though, so they will be racing when they come back across the line next time. And Team France has the useful buffer, if you like, of the Team Pakistan car, but between itself and Germany. Germany is actually the second car in this race, even though it's not the second car on the road. Mexico, New Zealand, Canada, lots of people here will use this uh, restart as an opportunity, perhaps to attack going into Tarzan corner. And Nicolas Lapierre is taking it ever so slowly uh, up through turn nine and 10 there, the S's. Yes, and he's fully entitled to do that, to let the safety car get back safely into the pit. He wants to get to these final two turns and then get on with the programme. Now, whether France determined there, he's done it, he's already accelerating flat out. And Pakistan of course, has been caught short, and of course, none of these cars are allowed to overtake each other until they cross the start-finish line. This is going to work perfectly for France. That's a clever move, because Pakistan cannot be passed until they get to the line. Everybody else knows that. They know they can't overtake until they get to the line. Finally, they can, and now Germany goes past. But look at the lead, and look at all this behind. Surely, oh, they just about made it. New Zealand's gone around the outside, still side by side with Canada. Nothing to choose between them, wheel to wheel. New Zealand stays ahead and, of Canada. And that was hard play from Matt Halliday. He had Canada right alongside him. He had to do everything he needed to do to keep that position. He did keep it, but smart thinking from Team France and Nicolas Lapierre did everything he was required to do precisely. He slowed the pack down. He knew he had an advantage with Pakistan being directly behind him. And then when he accelerated, Pakistan was caught without his foot in the throttle. And everybody else, Germany and the others, were unable to do anything other than watch Team France steam away. But Canada and New Zealand coming back again. Canada deciding they don't like losing position to New Zealand. So down the inside into turn seven, that's very difficult to do it into there. But certainly Canada 
James Hinchcliffe, first time in A1GP, giving Matt Halliday rain falling. There's that rain falling on the camera lens out of turn eight. It looks slippery over there, doesn't it? And you can see the cars moving around a bit. Team France really managing to open up a lead here from Germany in second place. New Zealand in third, then Canada and China. China really racing hard here. Frankie Cheng showing every ounce of ability that we've seen. And you're right, look at the umbrellas going yes, up. Yes, the, the rain is coming around. On, on Sunday, I think this is up around about turns. 9, 10, 11 and 12, that's the back side of the circuit and the corner leading onto the straight. We haven't seen the umbrellas yet go up on pit straight, so it must be around the final four turns on this racetrack. And this could again completely change the prospects for this race. Another bomb coming into the pits, because if they have to come in and change onto wet tyres, then it favours those that haven't stopped. Indonesia diving down the inside of Australia, and that was for position, that was for fifth place. And Anna Mikula putting a move on Ryan Briscoe. Indonesia gains the position from Australia. So all the aces are being played here today. As we see Team Canada, that they were battling with New Zealand for that position. They chose to come in and make the pit stop. And James Incliffe, who was all over the back of Canada, those look very fresh set of tyres to me. Brand new tyres, and they've obviously taken the gamble that it's not going to get any wetter. Surely you'd want to wait a little bit. The pit lane window stays open for another six laps. Surely you'd want to stay out there at the moment and see what the weather's going to do and leave it to the last possible moment. Uh, it's up at the top end of the track, as you say. We can see dark clouds out of the side of our commentary box but then it's much much clearer down towards the tiles yes, we're corner. getting raindrops hitting the side of our commentary position which is just overlooking pit straight we're not seeing umbrellas being raised yet on the the grandstands directly in front of us but clearly around this part of the track and further on towards 11 and 12 that's where those rain spots look to be at the heaviest so what's going on front still lead we've got some side by side battling here and uh, great britain that is with Team Italy trying to get past, uh, that is to get further up inside the top ten, but Great Britain is still the first of the cars that has made a pit stop. It's still the lead car that has stopped, although it's down in ninth position. And as every corner goes by, Darren Manning and Team GBR is losing ground to the field. He needs to get clear of Italy as quickly as possible. He needs to make the maximum use of those tyres, those fresh tyres that he had fitted some laps ago. So Team GBR, he's, well, he's sixth. He's got to watch out, though, because Netherlands and Brazil behind him have both made pit stops as well. So these guys are the ones who made their pit stops early and are in great shape here. But they've still got to get on with it because it does depend how much France can open up that gap, as you say. Let's just take a look. This was Great Britain trying to get past Italy a moment ago. And the door firmly shut to almost wheel to wheel, but Italy not conceding positions. They're not entitled to do so as Darren Manning gets alongside. So wet tires going on to Team Ireland. Now the rain is beginning to fall more heavily as we look down into the front part of the circuit. Umbrellas have gradually now they're going up. Problem though, John, with that left rear. It's they not coming up. Well, well, I think that might be some relief for Michael Devani. It's been a terrible weekend for Ireland. The work that they put into this team is outstanding. And uh, a little problem on that left rear cannot get the rear tower off to put a wet tower on. France still leads, and their last lap was a 132.7. So they've only lost about uh, two seconds on pace. There's the Czech car getting out of their way. Nicolas Lapierre sliding there. You can see the lack of grip, but their lap times have not gone. Oh! It is down around turns 9 and 10. Now you say France has lost two seconds, but everybody else is losing three and four. That was Basil Chaban for Lebanon, and he slid wide, so Basil gets back on track. We're not seeing enough rain on the circuit to cause spray, and still a problem on that left here. Finally, they get the, the nut release. The wet weather tyre will go on. The rain is falling here on the pit lane. It's almost a mirror of what it was doing some two hours ago. And when that rain came through, it was very, very brief, but very heavy. Saturated the track, and it will only be a matter of moments before the racetrack as Matt Halliday makes his way into the pit lane. And is Matt Halliday going to fit us in a wet weather tyres? They must have little choice, because with the rain falling now, it is not going to ease up yeah. for the next 10 minutes or so, and it will be a wet track. Wet tyres being made ready, it will be wet. The leaders lap time last time around 1.39, so they're now some nine seconds off the pace. You've got to go for wet, and this is going to help France, would you believe it? This is surely going to help France if they get a clean stop, because although they haven't stopped, they'll be able to go straight onto wet. And there's a problem with the left rear from New Zealand as well. They cannot get that wheel tyre removed. We 
saw this with Ireland, the same thing, because there's only one person allowed to work in that corner at a time he, nobody else can come in and touch it. There was Australia back out, Ryan Briscoe currently running down in his 14th place. Yes, but at least he's had a clean stop, and we're watching quite a few have dramas. This, oh, look at Great Britain slithering around on his slick tyres. That's Darren Manning. You know, they made an early pit stop, but of course at that time there was no danger of it raining. Well, I think the team GBR is going to throw the dice and gamble, yeah. but this rainstorm might clear through more quickly than other people would anticipate and stay out. If he can stay out and, and avoid that a second pit stop for a tyre change, this time to wet tyres, as long as he doesn't lose position, he's got the Netherlands lined up behind, he's got past Italy, finally Brazil, USA and India, they round out the top ten ahead of him, Indonesia, uh, Germany and France have yet to come in. And France stays out again, so they are also gambling. They're going to go to the last moment before they make their pit stop. Good tactics by Team France. They are going to wait until virtually lap 20, I would think, before they come into the pits. But Great Britain's got pressure on from local man, Jeroen Blikobolen for the Netherlands. The Netherlands going to the outside, down towards Tarzan corner. You can overtake on the outside here, and Blikobolen's going to try and drive round the outside of Great Britain, and he's done it! That's a a superb, absolutely fantastic from Jerome Blekemelen. Now that's local knowledge, that's what it means in the Tarzan Herb, and it is a bank corner, and as long as you can get sufficiently alongside the car you're trying to pass, you can keep station, and as long as you're just a nose ahead on the exit, then the, the other driver, in this case Darren Manning for Team GBR, has had to concede position. Rain on the lenses as they come up through turns four. Let's look again at Co Blake Mullen goes to the outside. This is a long way around. Darren Manning did everything he had to do to defend the corner. But look at the speed Blake Mullen carried because he could run the car higher in the turn. And then off the corner, he just gets that advantage. Here's the onboard look. Great move this by Blake Mullen. It is local knowledge here because you can use a little bit of banking. It is a slightly banked corner and he's used it absolutely to perfection. Positioned the car just right. He is now the lead car that has stopped and that could be crucial. But remember, the weather conditions are changing things as well. When is France going to stop? Well, it could be this time around, but they've got another lap or two in which they could do it. Well, France is going to stay out until the last possible moment. If they've got to go on to wet, well, they're going to gamble that this rain may clear away in the hope that they can stay at the last possible moment on a set of dry tyres. But the track, you can see there how much now that you're seeing the lines of the tyres on that tarmac. It is now getting to the point where it is quite difficult to keep the car straight and narrow, and especially as they come off to and 12, that is a difficult corner in the dry, but to try and take it in the wet on a set of dry where there's stick tyres is pushing the skill of the drivers just to the very edge. It is really raining hard opposite our commentary position now. It's coming down very, very heavily, and it's going to get nasty out there if you are. Yeah, look, everybody has decided. Right, Darren Manning amongst them. Second stop for Team GBR. This will be a stop for wet tyres. Great Britain in for the oh, second it's Indonesia and Lebanon. They almost collide. Indonesia decided it wanted a bit of ground that Lebanon had stopped. On. That was Lebanon's garage. Indonesia uses one further down. Wheels off all right on the British car, so Manning going for wet tyres. We're still waiting for France to make their stop. Mexico coming back in. Canada's in. Oh, he's been blocked he's in. Been Canada's blocked come in. And Canada, since these are sister operations, and Canada's come in, stopped on the angle. And that, of course, prevented Darren Manning from getting a clean run out. He had to be pulled back by his team. Again, vital seconds lost in a situation nothing to do with Team GBR. Canada just dived in and stopped in front of him. It is massively slippery out there now. The Netherlands, I don't think, did come in. So the Netherlands has moved right up. China there has rejoined now on wet tyres, just with India. When are we going to see France? And surely they're going to be into the pits at this time if they've managed to get round at all because it's been so slippery. Uh, just seeing the Czech car come past our commentary position. Indonesia coming in there as well. Still waiting to see France. New Zealand come across the line. And they're, they're waiting for Germany here in the pit lane as you see France struggling all around the racetrack, struggling for traction, just struggling for the, 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 the sheer, the velocity of the car, the load of the car, enough to break traction and see that car. Now, oh, and France all over the pace. Look at that. Steering with the movements of Lapierre. Ireland screams past down on the right hand side. Now, I hope Lapierre saw that because had it. the USA does lead this race. France 
is now in second place. So USA, having not made that stop, is leading. France is in second. Germany is in third place. And China trying to get past Mexico once again. We saw that little side-by-side -side action a moment ago. Those two racing hard. The Netherlands is now in fourth place. And then we're waiting for the others. Italy have really gained through this. They did make an early pit stop onto wet tyres. So Italy has jumped up to fifth. Great Britain is now sixth. Switzerland is up to seventh. Remember, Switzerland made that early pit stop. Then they made another pit stop to go on to wet. So Switzerland's jumped up to seventh. Australia is eighth. India is ninth. And Mexico and China are tenth and eleventh. I'm just trying to this mix. This is the first time this weekend anybody's been on in a set of wet weather tyres. So where their car setups are in relation to running in the wet tyres on a track that is not just wet, it's a very slick racetrack. There's not a lot of grip coming from the racetrack. And uh, for the first time this weekend, it's a brand new adventure. It is, but what heroics from Phil Giebler from Team USA. It stopped raining. Is it going to work for him? Let's see, that so was China. Yes, yes, and Malaysia back out on track. They got repair to that car, and it was China went off track up in the Taj, and that's just turning in and at the back end, stepping out and having to correct. And uh, the, the, the gravel trap there beckoned, and we saw Lebanon follow him up. Now, that wasn't in sympathy. That was just probably Basil Chaban got caught out by the extra moisture. In fact, what you'd call it, almost monsoon rain down at Tarzan. Now then, Team USA is still struggling round on these on these slick tyres. They were only 15 seconds, one five seconds ahead of France last time around, and Lapierre will be taking huge chunks out of his lead. Yeah, we've got to see with the lap time when France come across start finish line to see 157.6. Now it's getting better by the lap for Team USA, but the gap between France and the USA, New Zealand, New Zealand go off track as well. It's now down to 8.4 seconds. The seven second difference between wets and dries is a lot less than I would have anticipated. So the wet weather tyre benefit over the slick that the USA are running is not as significant as we might have expected. This was the moment that Matt Halliday ran a bit wild. He got the back end out first and then shot himself uh, right off track but managed to keep it going. Bit of luck and a bit of judgment, and he's still in there. Uh, New Zealand were 16th, though, last time around, so he's lost a lot of time. There is the United States car. Phil Giebler, the hero of the hour. Great Britain. Great Britain, Darren Manning going dirt tracking through the gravel. Can he get it going? Keep it going, keep it going. Yes, he's back on track. That was from sixth position. He rejoins, but that's Malaysia, who's but, a couple of laps down. But what's disappointing is that the difference in lap time between wets and dries is a lot less than we anticipated. And for the Team USA to, to be courageous enough to stay out, for Phil Giebler to have the skill to stay out, doing 1 minute 57s against the single fastest lap so far on wets, which is a 149.6, nine seconds difference between the two cars. But that is not very much. And of course, there we see Darren Manning locked it up, going into the Taj and Herpen, fighting to keep the car in some semblance of straight line into the gravel. Darren Manning's fastest up on wet tyres was only a 152. That's two seconds slower than France and Germany similarly equipped have been doing. So USA leads. There is the gap. You can see it now between USA and France. USA still on slick tyres. France attacking on wet tyres. Germany there running in third place. Then the Netherlands in fourth position also on wet tyres. It looks to me like the rain has stopped. The umbrellas are certainly down. We are now contending with a track that will start to become a drying track. Car off in turn 11. We saw a car stuck against the barrier, obviously spun on the exit of 11 and slapped the barrier on the inside. It is Pakistan. So Nur Ali's been having a bit of an adventurous time here on his A1 debut, but I think that could be the end of the day for the American-based Pakistani, and it's still USA leading, but just by 2.2 seconds as they crossed the line last time. A 156 from USA, six seconds slower on the lap than France. France using the wet tyres to their best effect. But the key is going to come at what point does the transition occur for the wet tyre to have no more than an advantage of six seconds is... Well, it means that when the track gets a drying line, then the advantage is going to go back to Team USA. What a courageous decision. I said it once, I'm going to say it a second time. Phil Giebler has done a magnificent job. When others have been on wets and gone off, he's on six and so far has stayed online. Now, he doesn't need to fight France off too much because if France get ahead, all well and good, they will still probably have to change onto slick tyres, whereas Phil Giebler for Team USA is already on his slick tyres. He doesn't have to change again if the track continues to dry out. But look forward there, the, the sky, and that's looking eastward. Looks very, very black indeed. But in the meantime, that's what we've got pretty much now with the rest of the circuit. Nice blue sky.
Oh, this is fantastic. What a confrontation here. Team USA versus Team France for the lead in the feature race. Just about half distance now. And Guy Blanc... And he's made a mistake. He's let him go through. Or he ran wide. Or the combination of two. Anyway, the fact is the pressure is off Phil Giebler. All he's got to do is still what he's done so successfully is keep this car on track. He's now got young Nico Hulkenberg from Germany behind him. He may be a little bit more impatient than we have there. Again, another rapper. He's at Lebanon or Canada. Canada, Canada yeah. went down in the tyres. And, and these Hitchcock. cars are all in wet weather tyres. Yet the lead car, well, the lead car up until a few moments ago, had stayed on slicks and had stayed on track. So USA has lost the lead to Team France and now will lose second place to Germany. It's likely to lose third to the Netherlands as well. And the Dutch fans are going to go crazy when they can see a potential podium. And uh, there is the orange car getting closer. But remember, if this track continues to dry, then Team USA... Oh, and there's a battle for the lead between France and Germany as well. Germany has caught right up to France. Both are wet tyres. Look at the two leaders. Germany's going really well and putting Nicolas Lapierre under pressure. First of four cars covered by just about a second. And Germany, Nico Hülkenberg, who again starred in qualifying. But if you watch Jerome, Ray Camullen go past Phil Giebler for Team USA. Now, the track difference. Last lap for France was a 152, for Germany a 150, but more representatively, 156 for Team USA. And the track, lap by lap, corner by corner, will start to dry. India's off down at the Taj, and there was that contact. We saw a red car just go through the corner. Maybe the two cars got together. So India may well be able to rejoin here. Great Britain currently running in ninth place. Let's just quickly run through the top ten. It's France, then Germany, the Netherlands, USA now down to fourth, Italy fifth, Switzerland in sixth place, Australia seventh, Mexico eighth, Great Britain ninth, India was tenth, then China, Indonesia, Singapore up to 13th place, Canada down to 14th, New Zealand 15th, Brazil 16th, then Greece, Ireland and Malaysia. That's how the runners are still running. And up front, it's France versus Germany versus the Netherlands. Countries all neighbouring each other here in Europe. And it's close, as you like, on track, all on wet tyres. And in the background, still feel Phil Giebler doing a heroic job on his slick tyres for Team USA. And if it continues to dry, this race could still come back to him. Quickest car on racetrack right now, in fact, is the orange car of the Netherlands. The hero here, the Kulus is up to the back of Germany. Germany moved from left to right to block. Looney allowed to make one blocking attempt in a overtaking. Again, going around the outside. Look at the speedy carriage around the outside. France struggling for grip, but Jerome can't quite get it done. I think, in fact, the reason that that overtake didn't take place was because France was going so slowly on the exit of Tarzan that it ran, a man of Halkenberg ran into the back, almost to France, and that sort of lost the momentum of the Netherlands. Blinkermolen is trying every of the clever wet lines. There is a definite wet line here at Zandvoort, and if you get in the right groove, you can gain a lot of traction, and you can see the reaction. Look, look, this was when he went side by side into Tarzan. Look at the reaction he got from the crowd. Brilliant to see, but he's still in third place at the moment and he's going to have to try a little bit harder but it was a good opportunity yes but he's got to remember not to try and do too much too quickly be patient he's got parts of the track where he's got strength and that particularly is coming onto the straight and also at the end of the straight round the tires and happen he knows this circuit better than any other competitor right here this afternoon and he's just got to get himself in position not to be too anxious not to be too greedy almost because Hulkenberg's trying to get all over the back and then to over the front in fact of France and let Blake Mullen just sit there, watch that action go on ahead of him. He's got a car currently that's quicker than the two in front of him. He's just got to be patient. He has to be patient. Still 21 laps to go then. All of the pit stops have been made, unless they have to make pit stops again to change tyres. And for the Dutch team, Jan Lammers there, what a performance this is. Up to third place for their team on home soil. And with every opportunity still right with the other two. Team Germany there second. We were riding on board with Hulkenberg. It's France, Germany, the Netherlands. There's nothing to choose between them, and plenty of time left now. Cross the line they go this time. Again, another block from Hulkenberg as they come down. Again, Blake and Mullen goes to the outside this time. Well, I think he's trying to get around. He's trying to get around. But again, France is there, and it sort of seems to almost act as a buffer. He's but done side it. by side. He's done it, surely, this time. He's done it. He's into second place, and Zandvoort goes crazy. The Netherlands second, France sliding. But look at the smooth line. Jerome Blake and look at the wide line he chooses. Looking for the grip. That's where track experience counts. Now, can he do it to Team France as well? I think he's got the speed because France, I think, is struggling with grip overall. They cannot run.
sort of the sort of the normal pace we'd expect from France. In fact, Germany and Holland are capable of running quicker than France. They just haven't been able so far to have a go. Now let's watch and see what Jerome Bleckenmuller lets again look and see what he does. He goes very high up into the corner. There is grip up there on these wet, slick conditions, and then drops down. Yeah, that was a good move there, wasn't it? Round the outside, but they're all sliding around. That was the reaction in the Dutch camp, but he did it. Yeah, says Jan Lammers. But Jan Lammers told us to expect something special from his rookie driver here today, this afternoon. We didn't expect the rain he's to fall. side by side with France. No, I thought he was for a moment. Nearly nosed he's, alongside. He's got to be patient. There are 20 laps to go, and we've got 25 minutes of this race remaining. I don't know which is going to come the sooner. I suspect the 70 minutes is now going to come sooner than the, the 25 or remaining 20 laps to go. And looking to find a way very, very slippery indeed, run 9 and 10. Look at the reaction from the fans. He's being urged on, cheered on here. Team France's car twitching around in the wet. Remember, these cars were all set up for dry conditions. They weren't set up for the wet. They might oh, have wet look tires. At France, the slide. You have, can see the, almost sideways in the track. Literally, there must be zero grip. Now, no problem, I think, whatsoever for Lickerville to just come out of turn 12, get alongside, and sort of put himself certainly in the position to provide a mirror of what he did with Germany. Team Netherlands trying to take the lead from Team France. The title holders in A1. He's done it. He's gone past. And what's Germany? Sanborn has gone crazy. And Team Netherlands in front. And what's Germany? They're going to try and sneak through. Not close enough to do so. What a move by Jeroen Blikamolen. He's taken the lead here with still 19 laps to go in the feature race. But the Dutch car is in front on Dutch soil. The youngster, Jeroen Blikamolen, who didn't think he would be racing here this weekend he got the late call this is how he did it yeah he did it because France are struggling for rear end grip Holland have got a much better balanced car they can carry the speed through turns 11 and 12 and the Fett come onto the straight more quickly get alongside we have seen Blake Mullen do this pass innumerable times goes high up gets the grip at the top of the circuit and then drops down with more speed and accelerates past going up into turns two and three. He made it look easy, didn't he? You're on bleak about it. Now he's got the pressure on, though. He's got a long way to go in this race. What about Team USA, John? How far back is our man on slick tyres? 17 seconds or so? Well, it's, it is 17 seconds. The trouble is the track hasn't shown any in indication to be drying out, but Germany now putting France under great pressure. Nico Hulkenberg, we've seen him drive in qualifying, stunning in qualifying, gets alongside as they come down the hill into turns 10, 9 and 10. Germany's done it into second place and France is pushed back to third. Maybe it is a new order in A1GP in the first event of the new season. France, great in the dry, but they're definitely struggling in these damp conditions. And I don't know why we've seen France's car, whether wet or dry, in the first series looking stunning. But clearly, when the rain came and they went under wet weather tyres, they were not the class of the field. Nicolas Lapierre has been having to hang on by the scruff of his neck to keep that car on racetrack. Look at them moving onto the wet line, trying to cool those wet tyres. There's still 18 laps to go. They've got to look after the wet tyres. And as the lap times reduce, the sun is coming out. You know, there's still a chance here for Team USA if the slick tyres start to come into effect. But he, at the moment, is still tending to drop back a bit. But I think we need to look more at the clock than the laps to go because we've got 22 minutes, 26, five seconds remaining with 18 laps. And in my book, that looks to me like it'll be a time finish rather than a lap finish. But there you see the drying line as they come through turn four and climb the hill up into turn five. Blake Muller is on a set of wet weather tyres, as is everybody here. These Cooper tyres, they're not the super sticky, soft wet weather tyres we see elsewhere. These tyres are designed to enable a driver in these drying track conditions to stay out if it is necessary, rather than end up with a tyre that falls to bits the moment it sees a dry part of racetrack. So, Bleekemola now with a clear track ahead of him, and he's pulled away quite a bit from Germany and France over the last lap or so, but don't discount Germany. Nico Hülkenberg's been looking very good, has raced here at Sandvolt in the past, a, a youngster, but it could be an opportunity. A quick glance in the mirror for Bleekemola, and where's the opposition? They're not that close as yet, but still plenty of time. But interestingly, the second quickest car out on track is not Germany or France, it is actually Italy. Italy up to fourth place, where they've come from, we haven't seen much of Italy all weekend. We've been saying, well, maybe Italy has been taking drivers that are paying for the opportunity rather than taking talent and then generating sponsorship as a consequence. And they're running in fourth and they're running second quickest per lap to the Netherlands. Yeah, Italy up to fourth position, and that is a surprise. Alessandro Piaghidi driving superbly well. Brazil, you're looking at there briefly. They're running 16th, Ireland down in 17th. I'm afraid neither of those two nations are having a particularly successful time here at Zambia.
Vanvoort, but what a topsy-turvy race it has been in terms of conditions. Uh, the top ten at the moment, Netherlands, Germany, France, Italy, Switzerland, one of the ones to watch as well, because Switzerland actually got the fastest lap before it started raining, and Switzerland has been showing great pace, they're fifth. USA is now down to sixth with their slick shod car. Uh, Australia seventh, Mexico eighth. You're watching a battle here at the moment between Singapore and India, and that is for position, that's for 13th. But should this track suddenly dry out, the USA is presently 27 and a half seconds behind the Netherlands, the race leader. I don't think it's possible to come in, make that tyre change back to slicks and go back out again and still retain the lead. I think any of the five cars ahead of, Australia, ahead of the United States, if or when they need to make that pit stop to come in and put on slick tyres, will find themselves running once again behind the USA and Phil Giebler and the USA, who may well have thrown the dice in the biggest possible way could end up the winners here this afternoon of the feature race. We're watching the timing screens to see when the USA starts to lap more quickly than all the cars on wet tyres. Singapore using the wet sensibly. That's Christian Murchison, who's driving well here this weekend, but I think India yeah, has done the move on him there. He's got passed around the outside, so India moves up to 13th position, 14th place for Singapore. Christian Murchison, his first single-seater race, I think in about two years, who uh, he also got a late call. There he is in the new Team Singapore car. Beautifully presented it is as well and Murchison has, has been pretty heroic himself this weekend getting such a late call but has just lost that 13th position to Team India well just under 20 minutes remaining and uh, this is going to get very tense indeed because those that are on the way with the tower are now having to contend with a, a drying line and particularly through the very fast parts of the racetrack where it is there's just a single line other parts of the track the slower parts like the hook and hose hairpin and tars and for that matter haven't yet shown the signs of showing a drying line but the time difference in lap time between the USA and the quicker of the cars on the wet weather tyres is hovering around three and a half, four seconds of that, favouring the wet weather tyre. But it's going to be very close. It's going to be a time race, in my view. 16 laps to go and coming up to 18 and a half minutes time remaining. Team USA need that track to dry out a little quicker than it is, of course. When we get to uh, autumn-type weather, the temperature's not as high as in midsummer. If we'd been midsummer, the track would be drying out very quickly. We'd be seeing steam coming off the surface, but that's not happening. It's not a cold day here at Zanvoort, but we certainly haven't got those higher summer temperatures that are going to dry the track out very quickly, and it may be that USA will simply run out of time Time. They're currently sixth, top five, Netherlands, Germany, France, Italy and Switzerland. On board here with Team Ireland, they're still involved in this other little race that's going on with Brazil and New Zealand. All on wet tyres down on that section and uh, lapping fairly quickly. Canada's into the pits though, must be a problem there for Team well, Canada. Is this, a, is this a, not a problem? Is it, is the problem is that they've decided, they've seen the wisdom of what America is doing and they've decided, well, let's again gamble, bring him in, and that is a, 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 well, it's a good decision from John Village, who runs this team for Team Canada, and uh, get him out, the track is drying, and I've seen races won here in Zandvoort in identical conditions to these, uh, by coming in early, anticipating the speed of track dry, and uh, that could well be the decision that Canada have taken, and it may well be the judgment that America gambled, and that was a big gamble to take so early, but we never knew how long this rainstorm was going to last or how ferocious it would be. And it started a flurry of pit stops now. We're going to see a number of pit stops by the looks of things as people do decide to go to six. That's because USA... France is back in. Wow, France in. Well, that's very interesting. Yeah, I guess that is a very sensible uh, manoeuvre from their point of view. They were running third, of course. The car wasn't really working terribly well on wet. It was skittering around a lot compared to some of the others. France making the early stop. And France, of course, have been the masters of pit stops in the previous series. So a good stop for France, get the airline out of the way. Nicola Lapierre and goes and drops the clutch, the car goes sideways on a very slippery pit lane. Of course, the pit lane, probably one of the fewer parts of the racetrack that, that uh, is going to get used. So he pulls out of the track as others come in again. Teams deciding this is the point at which to go in. I think he crossed that white line before it went dotted, but we'll have to check that later. Team GBR into the pits as well from ninth place for Great Britain, going on to slicks. Team USA is now lapping as fast as anybody. In fact, last time around, not quite the fastest lap of all, that was still the Netherlands, but who lead, remember, the Netherlands leads, tyre change going OK, yep, and Manning is away. But the key 
is that the USA in sixth place is 28.7 seconds. They're holding station with the lead Netherlands car, and it's going to take more than 28 seconds to come in the pit lane, down to the speed limit, stop, then your team have got to come out and do that tyre change, and then go down the pit lane, and look at the feel of cars coming in now for Ireland amongst them, New Zealand and in Brazil. Now, this is an important pit stop. These three have been tied together, and look, they've stopped very close. And Ireland can't get in properly because they've got a car between, between two cars. France. And France is off. That's France on its slick tyres, and he's run out of road. He's kept it going. He's kept out of the gravel completely, but he's been passed by China there. And that was done at turn seven. That's one of those long, long approaches. He comes down into the corner, and uh, there was just, you know, it was simply just too much power. Of course, these tyres, they may oh. well have been in tyre blankets, but I suspect they have not been heated up to normal race temperature. Germany in, Germany in from second place. So, will the Netherlands decide to come into the pits? Are they going to risk staying out on their wet tyres? They've got 15 minutes of racing still to do, and Germany goes for the change and puts on the slick tyres. Netherlands lead this race. Are they leaving it too late to come onto slicks? Are they going to go for the gamble? Well, the USA is now lapping quicker on dry slick tyres than Netherlands is lapping on full wet tyres. The gap is still 28 seconds, but if that's the case, a single or a couple of seconds a lap when the time available is a very, very close call, and I don't think it's possible, but the track will get drier by the lap, and therefore the distance in terms of laps, just lap speed between front and fourth where the USA is, is going to work in favour of USA. But that India car stopped, and the exit of seven is not going to help things. So I've just seen, I think it was... Uh, Hold on, France, France coming in. Yeah, I thought I saw it. I saw, I saw a blue and white car come past. I thought, hang on, what's going on here? And he's got, he's got his hand, I don't know what he's doing, he's got his hands out of the cockpit. Something went wrong, whether it was during that pit stop or whether something has occurred subsequent to the pit stop. So He's driving straight into the garage, all over for France. Team France is not going to start their campaign by winning here at Zanvil. The reigning title holders are not going to score in the feature race. They scored in the sprint race, but it's all over for Team France in the feature. And that's going to make a big difference in their title defence. It's the Netherlands that leads, currently still out on their wet tyres, lapping at about the same pace as Team USA on the slicks. We're at the exact crossover mark, and how will these wet tyres stand up to these drying conditions? Conditions. There is your race leader, Team Netherlands. Well, if he can keep the pace that as USA is doing at the track, remember, is it, it, partially dry. It's dry in these very fast sections, in the slow sections around the back of the circuit, where the sun is not able. It's a much lower sun on the horizon at this time of year than it would be midsummer, so they're not getting the benefit of the sun falling on those parts of the racetrack. The physics of the grandstands and the dunes and the topography of this area precludes it. So there you see, comes out of turn five, breaks into turn six. From here on, the track track is still quite slippery. It is going to be very tricky. Italy, by the way, as a result of all this, are now up to second. They also have not come into the pits. So Italy are in second place. Remember, they were out of luck in the sprint race here. They were a spinner. They got a contact into the first corner in the sprint race. Mexico back in. Oh, and he stalled it as well. It's all gone wrong. Is it? No, he hasn't stalled it. I don't know if he stalled it there or he just stopped and waited for the signal. Team Mexico back out on slick tyres, but they've left it a bit later than the others to make that change. You're looking now at Team Italy. Italy running in second position, but on wet tyres that are very much past their best. How long can they hold out on their tyres that are working so hard in this drying line? Look at that line. Look how distinct it is. And there, behind him, is Team USA. Now, USA, if he gets past Italy, USA will move up into second position. It's coming back to Philip Giebler. The gap between USA and the Netherlands down to 25 seconds. The gap between Italy and the USA. Well, there you see it. And uh, you have to say with the experience that Giebler has had on these tyres, he can't take a chance and go down the inside. He's got to be patient again. We've said that so often of so many drivers here this afternoon. Phil Giebler has done an amazing job to keep his car on track when it was saturated. But he just simply drives around the outside of Italy. And Giebler, he's decided to go into the... Uh, sorry, team Italy, I beg your pardon, going into the pits for a tyre change. So Italy left it late, and that will hurt them badly now. But it's Team USA on a charge. The gap first to second, 22 seconds and the Netherlands still continues to lead, but now USA some three seconds a lap quicker than the Netherlands on the last lap. Well, if we go the 12 lap distance, that's 36 seconds potentially, and in my opinion, it'll be more as the track dries out, but this is going to be a race of time. We've got 11 and a half minutes of this race remaining, and that's going to work against the USA. And the fastest man on track at the moment, in fact, is Nico Hülkenberg for Team Germany, a 1.1.1. 
135, a brilliant lap by the young German on the last lap. He is on slick tyres, remember. The USA, of course, they were held up behind Italy on that last lap, so that 39.8 both hurt the USA, and uh, that accounts for why his lap time was quite a lot slower than the similarly tired Germany. Yes, and Germany's got little to lose. They've got to go for it, whereas USA knows he's got a lot to protect here in such a strong potential position. Team Netherlands is the race leader with 10, just a, well, no, nearly 11 minutes to go, or 12 laps. It's going to be the 11 minutes uh, that will be the decisive factor. And will the wet tyres, those Cooper wet tyres, on the A1 GP car of Team Netherlands, will they last the distance? That's the question. That's what these guys are all hoping for. They're urging that car on. Look, looking for every vestige of moisture. Jerome Blegenmuller, here he comes down. He's got no choice now to take the racing line, but he went from left sharp across the track to pick up the moisture close to the barrier on that main straight. He's going to be a struggling now for the remaining 10 minutes. Those tyres are going to be working so hard. He's coming up to lap the Singapore car here. And of course, cars that are maybe on slick tyres where he's coming up to lap them, that may make life pretty difficult for him. Onto the wet stuff to try and cool the tyre. This was a moment ago when Indonesia, I think it is, uh, had a little bit of a trip. Across the grass, still on wet tyres, I notice. Been a very adventurous weekend for uh, Amanda Nicola. So he gets back on track. In the meantime, the gap between first and third, first and second, down to 16 seconds. Germany in third, a further eight seconds behind the USA and lapping currently about one and a half to two seconds a lap quicker. Top 10, Netherlands, USA, Germany, Italy have dropped down now. Switzerland up to fourth place. China in fifth place. Great effort for Team China. Australia sixth. Mexico seven, Indonesia dropped back a little bit. That means that Great Britain should be up to eighth. It depends if they got past Indonesia when Indonesia went off there. So Great Britain moving up the points a little bit behind them. Singapore, India, Canada and Greece. And a little battle going on further down the field with Brazil making its way past Singapore as the race leader comes out and comes out very cautiously, not trying to put unnecessary load into those tyres. And New Zealand gets past Singapore as well as we go on board. And this is, I think it is Italy, as they make their way back out of track on, on slick tyres. So it's all happening. In there are nine to go, and it will be done on time rather than on distance. And uh, coming out there is Team USA about to cross the line and still closing on the race leader. And Simon has... 7.6 seconds. Simon has news from the pits. Team Netherlands are anxiously looking at the monitors. They're looking at the lap times now, and they're taking a gamble on leaving Jaron Blakemolen out on wet weather tyres and to him to use his car control and circuit knowledge to hang on and win for Team Netherlands at home. Well, let's see if he does, Simon, because the gap between the Netherlands and USA is down to 7.4 seconds. And, you know, USA was nine seconds faster last time around. USA will catch him on this lap if they're not careful. And Ireland just steamed past the Netherlands as they came out of the Hogan Hall's hairpin bend up the hill. Even Ireland had to go offline onto the damp part of the circuit to get past the Netherlands, and they were able to do it and pull away. So now this is in a, to a deteriorating situation. Your own Blakenmuller, who did a, such a great job, job on these wet weather tires for the bulk of the race. There behind is the USA, Phil Giebler, the man who braved it out to stay on slick tires when all around him died into the pits for wet, is looking now at a possible victory. But look at Germany. Germany is in the background and catching USA as well. This is a stunning drive by Three, Nico Hülkenberg. Three seconds a lap faster on the last lap. Nico Hülkenberg, and all of these teenage wonders that's come into A1 GP this season and lapping in Team Germany three seconds quicker. There's the gap. Phil Gabler looking forward to trying to take the lead of this race. But this race victory may ultimately go to this young man, Nico Halkenberg from Germany. They called it well when they put our slick tyres on. Have they timed it to perfection? The Netherlands are going to take the gamble and stay out there. Seven minutes remain in this race. That means about four and a bit more laps to go. About four more laps, I should think. And can he hold on? I don't think he will hold on for four laps. The difference in speed is massive. And poor Jan Lammers face. He sees his team that's been leading this race for so long. The lead has just been gobbled up on the space of the last three laps. Team but USA you... trying to go around the outside. And the, and He's got to do it quickly because Germany's catching him. Indeed he is. But Michael Devaney was able to do that comfortably coming around here. And Blegenmuller not about to give up the lead but forced to concede. But watch Germany behind. The Hulkenberg going to dive down on the inside. Can he do it into five? Wisely he chooses not. So USA leads. Germany now in second place. And the Netherlands struggling round on their wet tyres are demoted to third. How far will they get?
in this race now because they're just waiting for the time to tick by. But Germany is the car to watch. This has been an outstanding drive by the youngster, 19-year-old Nico Hülkenberg, who is now applying the pressure to Giebler. But Giebler's exploits in the middle part of this race, when he stayed on slick tyres in treacherous conditions, I still think uh, one of the best bits of driving we've seen in A1. But here comes Germany, and they're really hunting around for that lead. And that was close, going into turn nine. The German almost made contact with the back of the USA car. He's a young kid. He's got to learn to be patient. He's got, he's got the pace. The trouble is now that he's slowed up by running directly behind the, the, the USA car. 19-year-old Nico Hülkenberg has got to show maturity and patience at 19 years of age. Phil Giebler, a little bit older, a little bit more experienced, but there's a shake of the head in the USA pit crew. Can USA stay in front in this race and take the first feature race win of the new season? We saw South Africa win earlier on today. They became a new winner. USA's never won a race, but neither has Germany. So we're likely to see another new winner. And it's very hard to try and make a pass around the exit of Tars and up into the Hugenholz happen Ben. The possibility of doing it now up the hill under acceleration. Both cars pretty much equally matched. But Hulkenberg didn't appear to get the power on a little bit earlier. Has carried the speed, but again running up into turn five. This is a very quick approach to easy to defend. No chance to dive down the inside. You do so, but the back of the USA car, you can see it beginning to move around. Again, Germany has a more compliant car, able to get the power on earlier, and USA now has a mirror full of Team Germany. So can the stars and stripes stay ahead? He's got it, he's done it, he's through. He's done it easily, hasn't he? Germany takes the lead. Germany takes the lead here in the Netherlands, and Nico Hülkenberg is another teenage sensation. We saw one in the sprint race in the shape of Adrian Zaub. Now we're seeing another. Nico Hülkenberg goes through. USA running in second. It should be a fairly safe second. Netherlands are still in third place, and the Netherlands are the ones still in danger. That was the reaction in the German camp as Nico Hülkenberg took the position, and the team there, the David Sears crew, who look after the engineering on that car, what a wonderful moment it was for them. Now they've just got to keep it together for the remaining four minutes. And Phil Giebler having to struggle to keep the car. Clearly, Germany have got car speed. Nico Hülkenberg has done a magnificent job. He used maturity and patience, as we see here. Further battle going on. New Zealand and Canada, that's a battle for 12th position. It is. The Netherlands, we think, are still in third place. Yes, they are, but being caught by Australia as well. You're looking at uh, New Zealand uh, further down the order, but right now the concentration really is going to be on whether Netherlands can hold on to a podium finish in this race. Canada running in 12th position. That was a, a change of place. Uh, New Zealand getting 12th ahead of Canada, but when they went past last time, the Netherlands had an 18-second uh, advantage over Australia, but they were seven seconds slower on the lap. This was another move. Italy and Singapore a moment ago. Italy now... Oh, and right and off and actually yes, hit the barrier. Snaps the barrier. Probably not very much damage, but... Uh, well, I don't know whether he'll decide he'll continue on. Italy had been running in fifth place, and uh, that may just decide them that uh, they'll just take what they can get. If they get a top-ten finish and pick up any points, they'll go for it. Let's look at that, Australia makes it no, way no, past. No, 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 that was Malaysia. Malaysia, that was Malaysia. It did look similar, but it was the yellow and white car in Malaysia, so I think Netherlands still holding on to third place at the moment. Australia not far behind, and then it's Mexico back there too. Can the Netherlands hold on for a podium on home soil or not? They've got an advantage of 18 seconds, and we've got two and a half minutes remaining, and I don't think that's going to be conceivable. Even Ryan Briscoe, as brilliant as he is, cannot make up that difference. It would need a mistake. An error from Johan Blekemullen to allow Australia to get on that final podium position. Well, it looks like we've got two laps to go. Germany's already crossed the line, some 3.2 seconds ahead of the United States. Here comes the Netherlands, about to cross the line in third place, using his wet weather tyres to their absolute limit. There won't be much left on them, but you have to say the tyres have withstood a dry track remarkably well. And Team Germany out on their own now, coming up to lap the Czech car. Well, Nick and Hulk and Nico, Hulk, well, Nico Hulkenberg has driven a race, I mean, I have to say, another youngster. We've got all these 18, in fact, 117 from Switzerland, 18, 19-year-old 
let's call them kids because they're not grown men yet some of them couldn't even go to our end car because they're under age that's right but they can drive an a1 gp car all 550 brake horsepower on board and germany's nico hulkenberg looking at a new star perhaps to be born from germany as one uh, sets off towards retirement nico hulkenberg could be the new face for german motorsport oh, what a great day we've had one star from south africa win the spin race and now seeing it the emergence of another star both backgrounds come from karting and that's the reason why these youngsters can get into a very powerful single-seater race car we've seen it elsewhere this year and they are immediately competitive but they've got so many years of skill and experience behind them that is based on a karting background it is totally invaluable to any youngster who wants to have a career in motorsport he will see the checkered flag next time around last lap begins and germany is going to take victory surely USA in second place, but what about that battle for third between the Netherlands and Australia? Let's see what the gap is when they come past us this next time. They're a long way behind these leaders, so I'm still waiting to see Netherlands come past our commentary position as we focus on Germany leading this race. And the Netherlands still not through. Are they going to get that podium finish? Yep, he's still in third. And the gap back to Australia, just across the line, some uh, 2.7 seconds. So Australia's got a great chance of taking the final podium slot as we look at Germany. And Germany's just got to stay out of trouble here. Coming up to lap Canada, who's running in 13th position. James Hinchcliffe uh, won't make it terribly easy, but of course he's not going to want to hold up the leader. He'll be getting blue flags. And I'm sure Team Germany will be able to nip through fairly quickly, not under much pressure from USA, who's some 5.7 seconds behind. There you are. Canada moves cleanly out of the way and Germany continues en route heading for Germany's first win in A1 GP two new winners to add to the tally from last year it really has been a, a very open day indeed eight nations might have won in the first season but we've already had two new nations winning races here today South Africa and now Germany become A1 GP winners out of the final corner it's Nico Hulkenberg for Team Germany who takes the victory at Sandvoort in the feature race second goes to the USA but who is going to finish third that's the big question look in the background USA second now it's a long gap you're going to be waiting here waiting 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 because the Netherlands was a long way behind when they came past last time but they're still racing for third position there the Australia's through Australia I just saw Australia had got past, and it's the Netherlands now. Oh, their gamble didn't quite pay off. They're going to be just off the podium. He's going to finish in a heroic fourth place. Well done to your own bleak but Australia takes third. Netherlands takes fourth, and with that fourth, they become the best nation finish on home soil. No nation has ever finished better than fifth in its home uh, race in the past, so at least they've got that to celebrate. But I do feel for them, it was so close at one stage to a win and at least to a podium. But in the end, those wet tyres just didn't have the grip in the drying conditions. What a race! Germany, the winners from the United States in second place and Australia in third. And <laughs> drama throughout there. But when you look at the performance of this young German driver, Nico Hulkenberg, then you have to be impressed. I know the team had already been impressed with his abilities in testing. Oh, and off at the end there was Brazil. Brazil uh, were running with 11, in 11th place, battling with New Zealand. Now, does that mean I think we're going to see a change there? Waiting for the other finishers to come through. Mexico has finished fifth, Italy is sixth, Great Britain seventh, Switzerland finish in eighth place, China ninth, only the second time that China have finished in the points in A1GP, and Indonesia finish in tenth place. So Great Britain unable to capitalise perhaps on the conditions on this occasion. Switzerland did a fine job because eighth place included a drive-through penalty earlier in this race, and indeed the... Uh, no, they didn't get fastest lap. The fastest lap was actually set towards the end by Team Malaysia. So Malaysia set the fastest lap despite being four laps down when they had an accident uh, off the line on the green flag lap. So Malaysia's Alex Young was actually going very, very quickly towards the end of that race and set fastest lap. 
but Switzerland make good progress moving up to eighth. And you're right, Bleekermullen's getting out of his car virtually now as he celebrates a fourth place finish just off the podium. It might have been, but nonetheless, uh, an heroic uh, drive there from Bleekermullen. The way he took the lead around the outside at the Tarzan corner. The fans truly have taken him to heart this weekend. He is the new Dutch hero. And what a response he's getting. Look at that. Isn't that something special? And he's going to lay a little bit of rubber down out there, out of the S's. And he just loves all this, and he, he loves playing to the crowd as well. Fantastic to see in a young man who hasn't done a lot of single-seater racing in recent years at all. But there is a man who's, like Adrian Zalg earlier on today, is making a name for himself. Nico Hülkenberg, winner for Germany. And there really is a new star around another new star. Team USA <laughs> finish in second, but it's time to celebrate. Punches the air there, Nico Hülkenberg. And the team will be absolutely delighted with that. Team USA, great effort, you know, for Team USA. That matches their previous best result as well. Uh, in fact, no, better than their previous best result. So, uh, 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 best, new best for the USA. And Australia, Briscoe, getting something out of a weekend that really wasn't looking very promising at all. Somehow he's brought the Australian car home in third, despite the fact that they weren't locked opposite the grandstand there. And uh, I think he's done a few donuts, leapt out of the car. Don't know if he did any donuts, we didn't quite see. But the fact that it's facing the wrong way gives an indication. And he's going to make the most of this. Fourth place, there's the team for Team Germany. His race engineer, Rob Creswell. I don't know whether he's a part of that. You can just see David Sears on the right. There's David Sears, who is boss of the engineering side of that team. Race engineer Rob Creswell will be, well, he'll be absolutely over the moon too. And Chris Gorn, who worked on the French car, race engineer for the French car last year, has joined that team, uh, working mainly on the New Zealand car, but obviously across both cars to a certain extent, and working together with Rob Creswell. And they have come up with some great solutions, but I think that actually Hulkenberg was the man who did the job there because the conditions were tricky throughout and it was about how you drove the car in those conditions. Hulkenberg the winner for Team Germany, fourth Mexico fifth, Italy sixth, Great Britain having to settle for seventh, Switzerland in eighth, China a great ninth place and tenth place for Indonesia. Eleventh New Zealand, then Brazil, Canada, Ireland and Greece. Singapore just behind them, not two teams together again, Malaysia with fastest lap but finished seventeenth ahead of India, France out of the race and other people in trouble with the Czech Republic, Lebanon, Pakistan and our first retirement and winner of the first race of the day, South Africa. Sun might be shining now, but the conditions in that race changed throughout. We started dry, we had the first round of pit stops, then it started to rain, and then it really was incredibly slippery out there for a while. But throughout it, Phil Giebler for Team USA kept the slicks on his car, and for a while there it looked as though that gamble had paid off. But the sheer pace and tactics for Team Germany by bringing Hülkenberg in at the crucial moment, it allowed them to take the victory. Well, what a day of drama it's been. A fairly steady sprint race in the morning, but a, a topsy-turvy feature race in the afternoon that goes to show that A1GP races are totally unpredictable here. The winning gap in the end, 7.8 seconds for Team Germany. I mean, Hülkenberg was flying towards the end of those. As I say, he didn't actually set the fastest lap of the race, but uh, nonetheless, it was very, very impressive performance by him. And uh, for the Netherlands, a fourth place finish, which I think they'll be pretty satisfied with. There is Jeroen Bleekermullen. He led the race, he looked set for a podium at one stage. It wasn't quite to be but he certainly has not disgraced himself this weekend with all of that pressure resting on his shoulders, the late call to drive the car, and he's still come through and performed, and that is a, a, a really wonderful effort. Probably worth the gamble from Jan Lammer's point of view. You could say, well, they, they might have brought the car in at the same time that Germany came in, but, uh, you know, when you've got the lead of a race, you'll do anything to hold on to it, and if... For some reason, it had just rained a little bit more at that stage, which it could easily have done. Then he would have been the real hero of the day. He would have come through as the race winner. As it was, he has to settle for fourth place, but they don't care. They've had a great time. And they've been able to cheer him on. They've watched him in the lead of the race. They've enjoyed the battle that he's had. It was a beautifully clean battle. 
throughout as well. We saw no nasty driving tactics. And uh, he's going to do a bit of a Elio Castro Nevis moment here, climbing the fences. <laughs> uh, it's good to see. The Dutch fans have taken A1GP to heart, and they've now taken Jeroen Blinkermolen to heart as well. Hope he gets down there safely. Germany, USA and Australia, the three drivers that we will be seeing, of course, celebrating first, second and third places, but the first man off the podium, Jeroen Blinkermolen, surviving a difficult race there to finish in fourth. So we're just waiting for the drivers to make their way up onto the podium now. And of course, it's going to be Ryan Briscoe for Australia, man who has been in the points in every race he's driven except for the sprint race this morning. And uh, if you think back to that sprint race, in fact, Australia finished in 13th position. So for Australia to have finished in 13th in the sprint race, started 14th in the feature, and they come through to finish in third place. What a great effort that was by Ryan Briscoe. <laughs> there is Briscoe. Third place for him after all of that. But we're going to get to hear a rather familiar national anthem when it comes to motorsport. Anthem plays out and whilst it might be a familiar theme in motorsport around the world it's the first time that it's happened in a1 GP Germany becoming the tenth nation to win a race but first of all it's Ryan Briscoe to be presented uh, his trophy his medal for finishing in third position and a big big smile there for Ryan Briscoe Scoring eight points, and uh, there's a big smile on his face there. Don't forget, good money as well for the feature race. $150,000 going to the team that finishes in third place. $200,000 prize money to the team finishing in second. And for Team USA, Phil Giebler, a star performer, now looked after by West Surrey, or by WSR, Team WSR, looking after the engineering for Team USA. And what a great start to their relationship it is. Second place for Giebler, who stayed on track in the most treacherous of conditions on slick tyres. But it's going to be a victory for Team Germany. And indeed, it is the Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Jan-Peter Balkenende, who presents that medal and the trophy for victory to Nico Hülkenberg. So it's time for the photographs. And that is a podium, I think, that would have been extremely difficult to predict coming in to the races this morning after looking at qualifying yesterday. Germany actually were very quick in qualifying, qualifying fourth on the grid for the sprint race. They had one of the fastest times throughout that session. But as I mentioned, the others, USA, they qualified in seventh. They were then given sixth with the demise of Switzerland. And Australia qualified in 13th place for the sprint race. So to come through and finish third, that is a great effort. Champagne spray time. Top international win for the first time for Hulkenberg. He's only recently come out of Formula BMW, for goodness sake. He was the German BMW champion in 2005. He's been racing in the German F3 Cup in 2006, finished fifth overall, had three poles and one victory. But he has impressed them so much with his pace in an A1 car. And Team Germany take their first victory. So the 
drivers will now make their way through to Pangea, the hospitality area. Take them a few moments to make their way over there and we'll have a chance to listen to their comments as a result of that up and down race, wet and dry, changing conditions throughout and a race that uh, at times we thought that Team USA was going to win, we thought the Netherlands were going to win, we thought that France was going to win in the early stages. France, remember, had opened up a big lead in the dry it looked as though everything was going the way of Team France yet again, as we've seen on so many occasions in A1GP. But with the safety car coming out when it did, that certainly didn't help Team France. In fact, they recovered from that pretty well. But then when the rain came down, they left it a little bit too long before they changed onto wet tyres. That was the crucial call. And again, it was something that Team Germany did very, very effectively. They put the wet tyres on at the right time, but they also put the slick tyres on at the, at the right time. It was a, a brilliant piece of team tactics there for Germany because there were lots of things you could have got wrong and yet they got every call just right, as it turns out, with hindsight. Well, looking back on that feature race, a build-up that uh, saw all the cars going to the grid, but a problem for Malaysia even on the green flag lap. We saw the demise of Afraid of South Africa on the opening lap as a result of an accident up at turn two. And then France seemed to have the race very much under control in the early stages. There were battles throughout. Switzerland had a drive-through penalty, but it looked for a while as though France were going to continue their winning ways from last season. As it turned out, however, the timing of the pit stops made a big difference. One or two avoided coming into the pits because of the spun car of Pakistan. Great Britain was one of the first to make a pit stop, and for a while it looked as though Great Britain was going to be in the best possible position once everybody else had made a stop. As it turned out, however, we then saw a change in weather conditions. Suddenly, it started to rain. Cars were flying off track, but only one car stayed out there on the slick tyres, and that was Team USA. USA retained the lead for many laps. Team France weren't having such a good time of it. They'd made a late call to put it onto the wet tyres. New Zealand managed to recover from that scary-looking moment. And Team Netherlands then emerged into the battle for the lead, getting past Germany, first of all, moving up into second place. And then, with this move round the outside, the Netherlands took the lead and held the lead for a long, long time throughout the feature. Germany, meanwhile, was on wet tyres and picking off the places as well. Still people were getting into trouble, but it was all over for Team France with a mechanical problem that put them out. Then it was time to go back onto slick tyres. Again, Germany called it cleverly when they put their slick tyres on and as they worked through the latter stages of the race, they were able to close up on Team USA, make the move, get past and take the lead. And in the last few moments, it was just a question of easing away to victory. Beautiful drive from Nico Hülkenberg, a fantastic effort by Phil Giebler to stay on track in the early stages. A last-minute accident between New Zealand and Brazil, who finished in 11th and 12th positions. But Team USA celebrating second, whilst Germany celebrate the win. So that was how Germany came through to win the first feature race of the season here at the Zandvoort in the Netherlands. Ryan Briscoe, Phil Giebler and Nico Hülkenberg, 3-2-1 in the feature race. And they're now with John Watson in Pangea. Welcome to the Pangea. A1GP VIP hospitality area here this weekend, and you're giving these three gentlemen a warm round of applause for what today was an outstanding display of driving skill, but most of all, courage, particularly for those that stayed out on the slicks. But let's go to the race winner first of all, Nick Hilkenberg. Nick, I don't know what to say. You're at 19 years of age. You're one of this new generation of kids coming along. Where has it all come from? I don't know. I just pushed hard and uh, did my best. You did more than your best, you won the race. And you, know, you were one of the drivers early in the race that got caught with a safety car. Did you ever think that after that situation, when you were wrong-footed when the safety car came in, that you could actually end up on the podium or win the race? Um, not really. And uh, when the track dries up, for my second pit stop, I didn't have any overview over the field. I didn't know where I was. And then I got a call from, from the radio from my engineer, and he said, you're P1, P1, OK, well done. And uh, yeah, that's it. And how difficult having come in, put on wets, then going back out on the slicks. That looked pretty tough to us. Yeah, it was, but I was uh, not pushing too hard the first laps. And 
was not really at the beginning on the limit, and uh, but it was not too bad. Well, thank you, Nick. Congratulations. Phil Giebler, I have to say, Phil, you're the most courageous man I've seen here this weekend to stay out on a racetrack, absolutely saturated on slicks when others around you were falling off on wet weather tyres. Yeah, it was a, a really difficult race, and uh, I just had to give it up to my team for trusting uh, my choice for staying out. And uh, I knew the, the weather would blow by quite quick, and, and uh, luckily it went our way, so uh, it took some balls and it took a lot of luck. But... Uh, it worked out, and uh, I got to thank the team and uh, Team USA. I'm great, grateful for uh, putting me in the car, and I'm glad I could provide a podium for them. Well, Phil, you say it was your choice. You actually said no to the team today. Call you in? Well, they uh, they gave me the option. They're like, uh, it's quite wet, and I said, well, I'll, I'll just stay out. And once once I made that commitment, is uh, pretty much I, I just had to go out there and just just stick with it and make the most of it. But it was hard. It was like driving on eggshells, and uh, so many moments of almost going off. So. I was lucky to stay on the track, and uh, it, it proved to, to work out for us. Well, you got nine nice big fat points for your effort, and congratulations. Ryan Briscoe, you started 14th this afternoon for Australia. I bet you never thought you were going to be in the podium this afternoon. Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry, is that on? Well, Ryan's got a little problem handing over to from Phil. Sorry about that. OK, Ryan, yeah, do you I ever mean, think you'll be in the podium? It's, it's just fantastic for us today. I mean, uh, we've, we've been struggling all weekend with the car set up, and, uh, you know, we, we tried some things for the race, so it was a completely new car setup for, for me in the race. And, uh, you know, we started off and, and it was running decently, but it was kind of hard to pass around here. And then, uh, you know, with the safety car, we, we sort of got caught out there at the wrong time and uh, things weren't looking terrific. But then uh, saw the heavens opening up and we thought this could be our chance to get back in it. And, uh, you know, all the crew guys at Team Australia, they were fantastic. They were ready for me every time. And uh, they always gave me the options to, to do whatever you know, I could see around the track was necessary. Oh, Ryan, you pinched the place, that last podium place off the local hero, Jerome Blake Mullen, who also did the opposite of Phil. He stayed out on wet weather tires. I bet you feel sorry for him today. I know. They were, they were telling me he was third. I was coming around the last lap and they said, you're about eight seconds you, quicker than him. He's on wets and this is the last lap. You may not get lap. out of here tonight, my friend. And I'm looking at the crowd, and it's all orange, and I'm like, is it the right thing to pass this guy for third? But uh, had to do it. Sorry, well, Holland. It was a great race. I mean, starting from 14th, coming all the way through. I mean, an outstanding drive from all three drivers. Nico, thinking about, your, first of all, congratulations. You're actually now leading the A1 GP Championship. You've got 13 points, so that's a little bit of a bonus, isn't it? Yeah, it is great for us, for Team Germany, but uh, yeah. Uh, uh, tell me, you're in the car I take over for Brun next weekend. Yeah, there's next week uh, Brun and I'm sitting again in the car and yeah, we want to try to make something good again. And the seat holder for Team Germany, of course, is a friend of mine, a gentleman called Willy Weber. Do you think this drive today is going to impress Willy Weber at all? I don't know. Uh, wins I mean, first of all, is he your manager? <laughs> wins of all are... Uh, wins are always good, and uh, I don't know what he's thinking, but I think he's quite happy. I should think he's very happy indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for three great drives on a very, very difficult afternoon here in Zandvoort. Nico Hulkenberg, Phil Giebler, and Ryan Briscoe.